I'd like to introduce Andy. You collect romance books, right? I do, David. Yeah. I do. That's your thing. That is my thing. You are Dr. Love, is it? Are, well, you, not, are you not Dr. Love? Um, yes, I'm blushing in, inwardly as you're telling me that. <laughs> but yes, on the CGC boards, I am known as Dr. Love, a name I chose for myself to describe the kind of books that I'm interested in. Some comics, man. Let's look at some books. Yeah, I like, I, All right. I'm looking at a good one right now. I'm going to show you, basically, I'm going to show you 15 books, and these are three different publishers, guys. Um, the three biggest publishers of romance books. Number one biggest publisher, believe it or not, was Charlton with 1,370 issues. After that was DC with 900 and change, and the third was Marvel with 500 and change. All right, yeah. All right. that makes sense. When these guys started their runs all in the late 40s, 47, 48, 49, each of these publishers started out their lines with a photo cover book, like oh, I got it. this. Yeah. This is called a photo cover. Why? Because it's a photo on the cover. Why did they start out with photo covers? I mean, many of you would say, well, that's not of interest to me. I mean, I kind of like them, but it's an acquired taste. You don't grow up saying, boy, photo covers, I can't wait to buy one of those. Um, because it was what their readers were most used to. Life magazine. Life magazine, yeah. some paperback books. They had photo covers of stars, for instance, movie yeah. stars, on the yeah. covers. So the girls could look at that and go, oh, that looks like something I just saw. So that's Charlton making their way into the comic book publishing world with a romance Now book. notice, they're not selling guns on the back of this book. No guns. No you guns. Dress. Thank you. That's awesome, by the way. Very nice book. Now, like I said, the last romance book published was Charlton in 1983. These five books are going to span the Charlton publishing reign. Okay. From 49 to 83. Okay. There were over a thousand books. I can't show you all of them. I'm going to show you five of them, but they're going to cover that period of time. So we're going to jump ahead a couple of years. Now they're finished with photo covers and they're doing line drawn books. Drawn books. A beautiful black cover book by a, an artist named Capello, Art Capello. With a flying car. I love that book. <laughs> it does have a flying car. So, you know, romance books could be interesting. I mean, the covers could be interesting. I mean, I, when I was trying to be, or like I said, at one point I thought maybe I could buy every single, a copy of every single romance book ever published. Wow. Almost 6,000. I mean, for people who collect comics, sometimes 6,000 is not a big deal. I know, guys, I have 20,000 books. But trying to get all 6,000 romance books, that was a big deal, and I had to bail out about halfway through. Wow. Yeah. At one point, I had about 3,500 of these books. That's impressive. It, it is impressive. When you saw them all in one spot, considering you could go to a guy's house and not even see one, or if that guy had 10, it'd well, be no, amazing. Well, now I'm starting, I'm starting to understand why you understand how many were published. You were really going for it. I mean, you were going to get every romance. Well, book. you know, someone wrote a book about it. A gal named Michelle Nolan uh, wrote a book called Romance on the Racks. And it listed the full, I mean, it laid out what they were. And it gave me an easy blueprint of what to shoot for. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. So this cover, by the way, is fantastic. It's very interesting. It kind of reminds me of Baker a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm a big fan of black covers. I mean, to get a black cover in grade, I don't got to tell you guys, it's really tough. You know, yeah. the spine ticks, it shows everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like them nice and clean. So 6.5 on that slab, but it presents better. And that was, I think, 53 or 54 in terms yeah. of the year. Now we jump up a couple of years. It's 1959. The guy in charge at Charlton is a name you've heard of before. I will mention him again. Vince Coletta. A favorite of yours, right, Dave? Your favorite of Jack Kirby's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what you don't know is before he worked for Marvel in terms of inking for Kirby, he was an artist in his own right, drawing romance for both Charlton and Atlas. This is his work for Charlton, 1959. This is a fantastic, beautiful romantic cover. Classic. Guy and girl in a clinch, or kiss as you might say. Beautiful moon in the background. No yeah. dialogue, no dialogue. You're right. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know I'm right, David. No, you're right. No, it's I, fantastic. It, it is, it's very clean. Look, um, even if you're not a romance very fan. Very classic. And how many of you are romance fans? I think there's more than one I'd want. Especially yeah. if you include Baker. But uh, I don't, I mean, how many people, well, maybe you wouldn't pay big money for it, but I mean, I would. But that book deserves a place in anybody's long box. So in, in this genre, uh -huh. 
this doesn't even say Coletta is an artist on it. If you're buying romance, right. then pretty much you're going to be interested in Coletta. For right. Pe for people who it's a different Coletta. I mean, he's drawing very. No, he's drawing his own work. <laughs> he's not just inking he's and erasing inking. other people's stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay, you're right. Yeah. He's drawing his own work. It's, it's very a distinctive different. style. It's very noticeable. It's very clean. I mean, romance collectors, I guess number one on that list would be Baker. Number two is often Vince Coletta. Is a book like this hard to get? Impossible. Okay. <laughs> and is this a very high grade copy of it? Nine two, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, hard it's a to freak. Find. It, this, you know, <laughs> talk about the new mutants. Hemsteed. This, this is a mutant book. Yeah. Okay. It's beautiful, by the way. It is beautiful. And she is. Stunning. She's gorgeous. She's stunning. gorgeous. She's gorgeous. He did good makeup, Vince Coletta. He Coletta did, some, did some good makeup. Coletta drew the most interior work of any other artist for romance books. Okay. 474 stories. Damn, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. When he was doing uh, Charlton and Atlas, he was doing covers and sometimes two interior stories. We all have, I call them the burning house books. These are the books, my house is on fire. I'm actually not running away from that. I'm running back into my house this is to one get of them, that man. book. That's one of those books. I get it. We're jumping up in time. Jumping. Almost 10 years to the introduction of the Bronze Age. Okay. That's silver. I mean, that's clearly not gold, what we just showed you. Yep. I call this the, one of the beginnings of the Bronze Age for romance. Summer Love, The Swingers, he's pulling her hair. It's pretty, it's pretty hot stuff for romance. It folks. is, actually. He's got a handful of oh her hair. Oh my God, he's yanking her hair. He's a hair yanker. You know, set, what's, what's bronze? Well, it's called the swingers, man. Uh, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Summer, summer love. So when does uh, bronze starts for superheroes? 69. 69, 70 with yeah, 69. GL. Crossover. All, all those number ones, okay. I think, kind of ended silver. Yeah. So 68, this, I mean, this is a different feel for romance. It's a different look, a different feel. That's the start. It is. Bronze. It looks bronze. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. I've never really liked Charlton that much. I don't know why I've kind of stayed away yeah, from I mean, Charlton's been the big, Charlton is the big joke. It's Charlton, man. In terms of quality, I mean, Charlton, I mean, the printing quality usually sucked. It's uh, it's just not not something... If you collected Charlton, you're, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. You <laughs> However, in romance, like I said, they printed the most romance. Not a lot of them were great, but they had some hidden gems. Hidden gems. So, and that's one of them. So is there anything else distinctive besides this has got a great cover? Is there an artist? In it? Who did that? Don't know. I mean, Because it's a mystery. It's a blank label it's book. It's a blank label. I think it's credited in, in GCD, Grand Comics Database. but You I, did notice his earring, right? Of course. Okay, that's awesome. My yeah. last book for Charlton. I like that the more I look at it. This is fantastic. Love this book. I do too. Okay. It's a couple of years later. I think we're talking 73 or something like that. God. It's just beautiful. That's by a, uh, a South American artist named of Demetrio who did like five or six covers for Charlton and some interior work as well. It's almost psychedelic. Not exactly. Um, it's not like he it's was. Really, it's really 74. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, yeah. They contracted with these South American artists to send the work up from South America. So this guy was working in this country, uh, drawing these books and sending them up to Connecticut to be published. Wow. It's just gorgeous cover. I just It is. It's just classic. I really like that. So as you got books like this, did you start to get them before other people were, were trying to buy these books? And Absolutely. That was one of the attractive qualities of the genre to me. I didn't have to compete because I'm going after romance and everyone left me alone. I mean, if you could find the books, it wasn't a lot of competition. There was one guy that I competed with. He's a friend of mine, my buddy. Yep. Uh, he's not with us today. I mean, he's still alive. He's not here today. Uh, buddy and I would compete on eBay furiously, head to head for romance books. Not a lot of, no. not a lot of other guys. <laughs> I'm going after books and I'm noticing because back then, you, your name, your eBay handle showed up in every book that you bid on and you won. You, you knew who it was. It was this guy. This guy again. It's this guy again? If only this guy would get out of my way, I could have this book for less. So finally one day, I said, well, what the heck? I might as well reach out to him and tell him to stay away from my books. So you can message each other through eBay. So I reach out to the guy. I said, hey, man, I collect romance too. Why don't we stop beating each other up and start like coordinating about you know, so if you tell me there's a book you want, maybe I'll get out of the way and you can have it for less. And, you know, right. let's, let's talk it out. Let's join forces, my romance friend. And, uh, and we did. 
my buddy is my buddy to this day. Right. We're close friends. I sell him books. He sells me books. So there are other people. So if this book came up right now, and I'm not, I really typically don't even ask people about value or anything yeah. else. I love this, by the way. Yeah. I'd want to own that. And, and it's so simple and, and it's so 1974. That is it, really, I expected to have shag carpeting when I opened I'm it. I'm telling you, it's indicative. I, I mean, it is just, and, and at that, I was 10 when this came out. So I'd want to buy this. So what numbers would I have to spend on an A5? For, for you, David? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> for you. I mean, how bad do you want it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, the answer for romance books is there are no comps on these books, my friends. Okay. These books never come up. You can't even find them, much less they come up for sale. So you can yeah. look on GPA and say, oh, it went for this. I'll give you this. You would, I see, would I see this in an auction? No, you'll never see it in an auction. Really? Uh, wow. That's, that's the highest grade. I got it. I think there's one other copy of this book that may be slapped, and I sold it to your friend, Ken Spencer. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ken hasn't cracked this one out. Well, he's, he's, he's got it. Ken's shy. Can, can, can shy on certain but stuff. But see, that tells me right away that this that this book, if Ken bought it, he doesn't buy anything for no, no reason. If he's buying one in less than 8.5, it's very hard to get. The best question really be in, in answering a question like that is, Andy, how much would you pay for this book? Because you know what? I, I'm not the kind of guy that will charge you a price that I would absolutely right. never pay. I mean, there are some books like that. The, the, they've gone so much in, in appreciation that I'm priced out of getting them myself. Like Baker, yeah. I, I can't afford Baker anymore. Right. I stopped being able to afford Baker many years ago. But a book like that, I'd pay seven fifty for that in a, in a heartbeat. I'm not talking so, seven dollars. Well, so I really, cents. I get it, and I really didn't know what it's worth. But you know, when you look at these books, exactly what to expect them to be listed for, because this is your genre. This right. is what you look at. No. I think some of these markets seem to really be a behind the table market that these are being sold privately if there's any sold yeah. and I don't really know what they're being sold for. So if I went to someone and said, I'll give you 500 thinking that was a good offer and they laugh at me because they just sold one for 800. Right. You know, I don't know because I, I'm not going to get comps the normal way I'd get comps by looking them up on things like cover price. You know, if you look at the CGC census, it may not be accurate because it's not really telling you the last sales if they're on, you know, a friend selling to a friend. Right. The thing is, it's not that you can't or wrong actually. Books. I was saying you can't find this book. That's not true. Yeah. You can find this book on eBay either now or soon. If you just wanted a copy of that book, you can get a copy. And it'll probably cost you seventeen dollars. Yep. But that copy will not be eight five. I'm a condition buyer. If I want VF plus VFNM, I will pay so far beyond what you might have to pay for it in a VG. Sure. It's not even funny. So what, that's what it means to me. What's the marginal line here? So where, where does this book all of a sudden become investable? I'll know it when I see it. You're going to now invest in it. Is it a 6.0, six, 6.5? Oh, six, no. It, it's the way it looks. Yes. It gotcha. can't be, you know, yeah. I, it's got to be cleaner than clean, man. Otherwise, I, I'm not interested. And if it is, I will pay big clean. money. It's clean. It's, it's clean. This is an unmerciful white cover. Yeah, I mean, that is not even, that cover is not as white as it used to be, I'm sure, in real life. It's starting to yellow a tad, yeah. but it's still, but, you it's, know, it's, it's not something, anything could be wrong with that, you'd see it. So, exactly. Yeah. So, I'm, Fantastic. I'm different. But then, you know, I was able to buy all the, <laughs> one of the reasons I was able to corral the market on a romance is because I was always willing to pay more than anybody else. Man. I mean, I put my money where my mouth is. Right. If you were up against me in an auction, I'd beat the shit out of you, man. I, I I'd, do what, I'd do what I had to do to get yep. the book, you know. Yep. Because you knew what you were getting, and and maybe other people weren't as um, I don't know committed as you were. <laughs> I you know at a certain point when I first began, it was a goof. But then when it turned in, and then you know it's kind of like now I'm into this thing. You know, right. Once I've got tens of thousand dollars into this thing, right. Now I can't just stop and say, oh, you know, I got sixteen thousand dollars into romance. That's it for me. I'm I'm done. You know, uh, I, it's like I got so much money into this. I need I need to stick with this thing. And right. get as much romance as I can, because what I'm shooting for is to be known as the guy with the best romance collection in the world. That's what I what I'm shooting for. Wow! And for a time, I had that rank. No more, but for a time, <laughs> I could say that that was true. You were on the mountain. I was on the top of the mountain. Not that only. <laughs> funny thing is, nobody really cared about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like if you told your friends. I've got the best romance collection in the world. It's like, you know, 
oh man, what? You know, <laughs> what's on TV? Is it time for dinner? It's like, you collect what? Romance? Man, I wouldn't take your books for free, bro. <laughs> 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 Much less pay you for that crap. I mean, what is that anyway? It's not crap. I'm here to tell you right now. I love it, man. What, whatever it is. They're freaky. They're strange. They're two. crazy. Oh, they're man. different. I would own either one of these right now. This is in my genre, which is which is bronze. So both of these like fit. And yeah, now that I kind of know this guy has an earring, I like it even more. <laughs> I've talked to enough guys over the years, especially on the boards, CGC boards, about romance. Slowly but surely. I mean, believe me, they're not going for it. I mean, but guys who wouldn't pay five bucks for that, they wouldn't even have it in their house. Now it's kind of like, all right, you know, I could see you have a one or two or maybe five romance books. Yep. You know, I want a baker. I want a coal. Right. You know, and then once you have a baker or a coal, well, maybe a colada. It's not so bad. And, and then before you know it, I'm selling you books. <laughs> <laughs> all so right. Let's do this next group. Next so group this is, is what? DC. DC. DC, number two in terms of the most romance books published. Just like Charlton, they started out with a photo cover. And boy, does this photo cover make your heart race? Well, of course not. <laughs> Secret Hearts number one. Two it, people riding bikes. It's still Secret Hearts number one. Yes. So this ran for a long time. Oh, Secret Hearts was a huge run. Yeah, I mean, it run. went for what? 10, 12, 14 years? I don't know. I had... Oh, uh, no, no, no. Secret Hearts went... Long? Not, as young, not as long as Young Love and Young Romance, but from 49 to maybe, I don't know, it's a 70s. But it started out with some run-of-the-mill photo cover just to get on the map. This is what it was like back then. Yeah. That's what life was you like. Went shopping in your bicycle. That's awesome. With the, uh, oh yeah, with the basket in the front. Oh man, <laughs> that's pretty strange. So are these out there? Copies of this book? I mean, are yeah, I think there's ready? a Secret Hearts one up uh, in Comic Link Auction right now. Really? Oh yeah, not that great. Yeah. Ado. Ado. Oh yeah, I'm following it. I'll be watching that as well. I'm a my my buddy that I told you about earlier. He's following it. I don't think he doesn't have a 9 I don't think. Would you strike if, a, if the price was right? Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. I like it. But since I own a 9 for me, that would probably be, you know, I don't know, 275 350 375 It's not going to go for that. It'll go for more. So no, I, I will, I will get price I wouldn't think it's going to go for 375 this an 8 You mean it would go for more or less? More. Uh, I'd have to ask my, my friend what he would pay for it. He <laughs> probably paid for more than that. I hear so, you. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I get the, it. The photo covers from that period, they're hard to find in grade. It, it's just hard to find. So, yeah. It's hard to find photo cover collectors. Ain't that the truth? I, I, I yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, listen, really, it's, I, it's like this. If Roman, <laughs> here's the hierarchy of, of comic book superhero, <laughs> romance books, the very bottom of the ladder, but photo cover <laughs> romance books? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's not a word for how, how deep in the hole those books are. In terms Don't of ever consider yourself a geek for comic books unless you collect photo cover books. I mean, Don't think you know what's going on. Exactly. I mean, I know guys that I, I would buy romance books for me, but they're not going to buy a photo cover. <laughs> That's where I hold the line of photo covers. Okay, That's next book. Funny, man. This is, man, Burning House book, Girls Romance, beautiful Yeah, cover. Tell, tell me about this book. I mean, it's definitely bright. It's just a lovely composition. It's got a Cinderella Love 25, if you know what that book is. It's a Baker book yeah. with a party feel to it. It's got that same kind of feel. It does feel like that. It's just beautifully drawn. It's got great colors. A wash tone, you can see, in the top of it. Um, what, what our friend Mick was talking about in terms of get gray tone, wash tone. It's got a yep. wash tone feel to it in the background. It does. The characters are drawn fabulously. It's got a lot of heart to it, some emotion, people partying in the background. Uh, it's great. Love it. Great. Now we're getting into more of what DC was all about. See, this is where I start to really enjoy oh, yeah? what they were doing okay. in terms of covers. Girls yeah. love. Now that yeah, is... This is this is dope. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I would buy in this grade and higher. It is dope. I don't know why I missed this my first time collecting. Probably because I didn't think it was cool or masculine or whatever reason. First I, time, what year was that? This came out in 59, but when oh. I was collecting, I stopped collecting for 20 years, and I stopped uh, like 2002, so there was a huge gap in my collecting. Right. But when I was collecting, I collected underground comics, and I collected horror the thing books. Is you never would have run into that. I, I would have never seen it. You never would have seen I it. I wasn't familiar. So when I came back, I heard that like romance had, had moved up. Yeah, it was mo it moved slow, up the ladder. It was creeping up. <laughs> moved creeping up, up the ladder, and people were actually starting to go after particular artists in particular eras. Mm -hmm. 
I started to see some covers like this, not this one. And every time I saw one, I'm like, I get why someone would want that. I want that. I want that in 9.2 or 9.4. Yeah, and yeah. I started off like thinking, I'm going to get a 9.6 of that. And my brother's like, no, you're not. You're not going to see a 9.6 of that no, book. Not they, that. They're, they're, they don't exist. And if they do, they, you might see one in five years, a 9.2 or 9.4. So yeah, books like that, a, te a technical grade of 8.0 or 8.5 is pretty good. And my books usually present better than the technical grade. This is a classic DC. It's, it's really nice. You've got no you've got no dialogue. There's no word balloons. It's the image, the 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 picture is going to tell the story. And the yeah. back cover work was incredible too. Yeah, so it's telling I mean, five other romance books. You talk about promo work on the back cover. Yeah. That's promo work That's on the badass. back cover. I, and, like, and I like DC romance stuff. You, know, you think a lot. It's like, well, is that the picture you wanted? You're going to try and get people to buy a book about some kind of heartache, but you know what? Heartache sold and still does. All right, next book, 1965. This is an interesting book. Great colors, great composition. I mean, sweet color palette on this. I've never seen this till today. I have to own this book. Well, you know what throws me out? That green is kind of jarring. I know. It, it really, it doesn't, ma it doesn't match. Is exactly. it black and white or is I mean, it? I'm telling you, the palette is it a gray is tone? I don't, it's terrific. I've never seen a cover like that. Now, here's the thing about this but, book. But the art is great. And I'll tell you why it's yeah. great. Who is that? John Romita. Okay. Yeah. Senior. Okay, let's talk about Romita first. So this 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 is uh, Harry Osborne. It, you know what? It's he gets it. This guy knows. And that I want to talk to you about that for a second, just briefly. First of all, Romita, not many people know this. Now you're gonna know this. Romita drew the most, he was the most prolific cover artist for romance. Okay. Certainly wasn't Baker. Baker was number three, Coletta was number two, Romita was number one with 203 plus covers. Back then, in, for DC, you worked, but you were not allowed to put your name on those books. <laughs> None of them were. So they kept Romita chained up in some office for eight years, working only on romance books. He wasn't allowed to draw war, he wasn't allowed to draw a superhero, Romance, day in, day out, day in, day out, week in, week out, eight years. Finally, by 1965, the guy said, you know what? I'm done, man. I've had it with this. I mean, yeah, romance is cool. I'm pretty good at it by now, but I've done it enough. I'm out. I'm done. Goodbye. Stan Lee heard that Romita left D.C., called him up, said, John, let's talk. Gave him a little project. Maybe you remember it. It's Daredevil versus Spidey. You know, um, and then three months after that, Romita was brought on to draw Spidey. Now, here's my theory, folks. You can agree or disagree. This is right before that. This is right before Literally that. Literally right Literally before Literally right before that. Yeah. Romita drawing Spidey was the best thing to happen to that character. I say Ditko drawing Spidey, you're only going to go so far. Because Ditko, I mean, he's a particular type of art. I mean, he's cool, but... It's, it's Ditko, okay? Romita's something different. Draw more realistic characters, more uh, attractive characters, both men and women, especially when it came to the women. Now, remember, who, who had we seen Peter with prior? You know, with Ditko, it was Betty Brant's like, oh, please. <laughs> this is not very attractive. I mean, this is not going to get your heart racing, this Betty Brant drawn by Ditko. Right. But then we got Gwen coming in with, uh, with Romita. Yeah. But even better than Gwen was when they rolled out MJ, it was the best. It was the I best. Remember, I remember, remember reading that. I liked reading about Peter and MJ, and that's one of the reasons I liked continuing to read Spidey, was these women were attractive to me as a teenage boy. And I think that's what really moved yeah. Spidey to the next level. I agree. So, no Romita drawing romance in DC, no great Spidey, no MCU universe. <laughs> that's romance. what I have to say about that. You owe it all the romance. Romance all save comics. It. Here's where we start, I call. <clears throat> Again, you saw a yes. bronze starter for Charlton, bronze starter for DC. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can tell it's a different style coming out. Yep. Psychedelic. Falling in Love, number 99. Are you saying there was 98 issues of Falling in Love before, or was it Love? Oh, no. It was, it was Falling, falling in, love in Love from 1 to 99. It went on beyond that. Yeah, everyone loves that book. There's a lot of them graded in the census. I wish I could get a higher grade. 6 O's is like the best I could get my hands on. But, it's, you know, it's pretty good looking nice. six I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Okay. That was fun. The last of the three big publishers, Marvel, turning into Atlas, turning back to Marvel. 
like the others, they started off with photo covers. Photo covers. Except Marvel had a slightly different take on photo covers. Their photo covers were strange and interesting. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, check that out. Oh, is okay. that creepy or what? I mean, that's that's a she's going to kill them I when mean, they leave. Just, There's going to be strange. a murder. It's humorous. It's entertaining. It's weird. No, we all know this the type of situation actually happens. One girl's <laughs> amazing confession. I mean, I was whistle bait. Yeah, and, and the and the titles, the, the title balloons are pretty damn funny. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, so they started out with photo cover, like all the others did in that time, and then they moved on pretty quickly into line drawn books. This is number eleven of my own romance. Are these hard to find? Yeah, but yeah, in grade, it's, it's, it's just not happening. You just can't, if you're superhero collecting, you know you want to get this issue, you know you want an 8590-9294. It's just a question of money. Right. It's just a question of money. These books, it's not like that. It's a question of, can you find any copy? I mean, that, that you can live give away years, in? man. Years and years and years and years to have a nice copy. Right. My friend Mick was telling you about this great artist for <clears throat> war and western by the wow. name of Russ Heath. Same artist, because he worked for the same company, Atlas. However, you had to be a specialist to work on these comics. They didn't let any of their other guys just come over and work on that side of the, uh, of the pond. Russ Heath was allowed to draw two covers for the love books, and that's one of the two. As such, it is very collectible and very hard to find. Yeah, and her face. She's shocked. Classic. Shocked. She's got the classic look, like, oh, no, you didn't. It's a great composition. The it colors, is it's a nice palette. It's so well done. Atlas had other great artists, one of whom was Al Hartley. In a very nice classic romance cover. Again, this is pre-code. Wow, this is a great cover. You notice <laughs> a lot of romance covers have people kissing. That's kind of what you'd expect from a romance book. But no like, dialogue, dialogue not necessarily. But it is needed. great composition. It's great it's, composition. It's, it's, it's nice well snowy scene. Yeah. It's well done. It's very classic. It's very really nice. pretty people. Very pretty kissing each other. Yeah, great, it's great awesome. colors. I just I, I love it. Yeah. Al Hartley did some great work for Alice in terms of the romance, and then eventually he moved on to do a lot of teen work, and his whole style changed. And I don't know if it's because it had to change for a different audience, or uh, I don't know what. But it's a bit of a shame. That was some great work that he did. I love it. Love this book, black cover, some of my favorites. Drawn by Vinnie Coletta. Okay. Pencil and ink. Wow. A lot of black, wow, there's a I lot mean, of black in that cover. There's a lot of black in that cover. <laughs> I'm really, I'm a fool for black covers, man. Wow. In good shape. I just, I can't keep my hands off of them. Once they come it's off. It's like 65, 70% black. I know. I like it. I love it too. There's a challenge for you. There's a challenge for you. This is a nice copy, actually. For 7.0, it presents great. White pages, baby. You, yes, sir. It presents great. My last book, now we're not talking Atlas anymore, we're moving back to Marvel, is somebody we've seen before. Can you tell who it is? Does the style look familiar? My Love Number One, 1969. This time, he was allowed to sign the book with his yeah. own name. Mr. Ramita. And, and he here did it, is. it on her hanky, what her monogram was. This is fantastic. It is fantastic. I, I would buy this all day long. Yeah. That sells well. Uh, Ramita came back, and uh, he was with Marvel, but they said, come on, let's do some more romance again. What do you say? And he said, okay. He did two titles, My Love and Our Love Story, and he ran it from 69 to when it ended in 77 with his last issue of those two titles, and that's when it came to an end for DC. This is a really nice copy, by the way. Mm -hmm. Nine, four white pages. Very nice. When I got that, <laughs> I got that when 9-4s, <laughs> they weren't far and few between. I paid a fortune for that book. 9-4 white pages with great centering, you know. It is. It's centered perfectly. Love, I love its registration. <laughs> I paid a fortune for that margin. book. And then, of course, you know, some of you have done over the years, it was CGC, where it turned out to be like the only 9-4. I think that was highest grade at the time. Uh -oh. You know, fast forward 10 years, 15 years, it's like, it's not the highest grade anymore. There's 9-6s out there or even 9-8s and... What you might have paid, you know, thousand bucks plus four, you can have, you know, people, you couldn't sell it now for, for 650. It's one of those deals. But I don't care. I love the book. Right. It's great. That's a keeper. For that me. is a keeper. Yeah, it's a keeper. It's just classic. It's just so well done. I didn't like what Marvel is doing nearly as much as I like with DC. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen, I've seen this, here, this genre in DC. I bet there's 30 books I'd like to buy. I wouldn't say so much for Marvel. I, I, Marvel wasn't doing 
Marvel had better on monsters and other yeah, non, sure. um, non-hero stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have to get it, but they didn't mean they didn't try. Yeah, they gave it one last arrivederci. But that book's fantastic. So yeah. thank you for sharing, Dr. Love. You're welcome. You shared some love. <laughs> I did. Love these. You shared, you shared some fantastic books and some of your friends' books. Um, these are great. Yes, and thank my friend for putting this book in mind for the show and tell. Um, I love geeking out with these books with you guys. And uh, I'll come back in another segment and do a couple more. Things. All right. Bye now. Thank you. That was fun. You're fun. Thank you.